Oh, that's delicious. You'll likely find this crazy, but in Japan, it's legal to kidnap children. Yes, legal. A bizarre law allows for a disgruntled parent who separates from their spouse to then literally abduct their kids and run off into the night. If there's dispute, co-parenting doesn't exist in Japan. The mother or father who was last living with the children is automatically awarded sole custody. Now, while other countries are free to make up their own rules, no matter how strange, in this case, there are 82 Australian kids innocently caught up in the mess. He hasn't seen them since 2019, when they were taken by their mum. Everywhere I am, I walk and I look. The chances of seeing the kids are, you know, millions to one. It is absolutely gut-wrenching that I'm not allowed to see my kids. 82 Australian children have been abducted by a parent in Japan as a result of the country's sole custody laws. Hey folks, I want to welcome you all to this little informal talk. It's not going to be action packed. The scenery is not going to change. But I just want to discuss a topic that I've been meaning to talk about uh, for quite some time. I'm gonna to have to give a big long disclaimer up front so the you know the assholes of the world don't sue me for claiming that I'm uh, giving legal advice. So bear with me for a few minutes of disclaimers. And then we're just gonna informally talk about international child custody. The purpose of this video is to invoke thought in those of you who are planning to move outside of your home country with your children. Now, I'm gonna use the Philippines, for example, because that's currently where I'm at. I'll talk about that a little bit. I know a lot of you are planning to move over here or you just moved over here. Um, I realize the, the state of affairs in the United States, especially with the public school system, is horrible. I don't live there, I'm not living it, but I listen to you guys and gals all the time. Um, so I have an idea. I have, I'm, I'm not feeling your pain firsthand because I haven't lived in the United States in over a decade. But from what I understand and what I can see from the outside, it's just insanity going on over there. And you can leave the United States, leave the West, and go many places in the world where it's still traditional values, you know, like we grew up, my generation, the 70s, um, 80s, before shit started falling apart on a social level. Um, so I understand your, your motivation and desire to leave America because of what's going on in the United States. I got it. Um, so let me go on. First of all, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not here giving legal advice. The only purpose of this talk is to invoke thought in people who may find themselves in the situation to where they're gonna move outside of their home country with their children and their spouse, okay? Uh, if you have any specific questions, you need to contact the expert. Who's an expert? Well, it's, a, it's an attorney who uh, specializes in international in uh, international custody law, okay? Don't consult Dr. Google or uh, Attorney Google or Attorney Marcos uh, because they're not the ones that's gonna help you. They're not the ones that are giving you true advice, okay? You need to talk to a lawyer. So for all, uh, all the assholes that are still gonna you know, try to, oh, you're giving legal advice. Motherfuckers, do I look like a fucking lawyer to you? Okay, let's use common sense. I'm sitting here on my couch, all right? I'm drinking a fucking beer. I've been smoking, uh, no, this ain't marijuana, this is cigarettes. It's tobacco and a lumboy leaf and here in the Philippines, you know, get it at the market. Um, I, I put, the only reason, the only reason I put a shirt on for this video is so I can hang this wireless mic here because it's just better audio quality and less background noise. If I was using the shotgun mic, I wouldn't even be wearing a shirt. Do I look like a lawyer? Would you take legal advice from me? 
okay in the current state that i'm in am i wearing a suit and tie no motherfucker so i'm not giving legal advice okay anybody wants to blame that uh, bring that shit up well i don't think a jury is going to convict me of playing lawyer when i'm sitting here drinking beer smoking uh damn tobacco with a fucking tree leaf rolled up in a tree leaf uh you know dressed with a goddamn wife beater on is that enough legal cheese served and i'm not here giving legal advice i think so moving right along okay there's this thing called jurisdiction right and I'm not going to speak legalese. I just want to basically, when you bring a case to a court, the first thing that a court, the judge, is going to look at and decide is whether or not he or she has what's called jurisdiction over your case. He has to decide or she has to decide, step one, do I have the authority? Does this fall into my lap, into my zone, my state? Uh, my district, my city, whatever his jurisdiction is, he's going to decide whether or not I can even hear this case. That, that's pretty much step one, right? So for example, you and your wife live in Alabama for 20 years and, you know, she runs to Kansas tomorrow and files for divorce. Well, it's going to go before that judge in Kansas and you can show up and say, judge, we don't live in Kansas. Me and my wife both live in Alabama. The kids go to school in Alabama. We lived there for 10 years. Uh, she's crazy. She ran up here last night, rented a fucking room at the Motel 6. Uh, and we object to this case. We object to the case based on jurisdiction. The judge is going to look at that and say, yeah, exactly. I don't have jurisdiction over this case. Ma'am, you need to go down to Alabama and you need to file your case down there in the county in which you reside. Okay, so in that case, it's pretty clear, right? But what happens if the wife moves to California and lives in California for six months? Then all of a sudden, that's her home of residence. And even though you're still stuck down in Alabama... The judge may consider that and consider that he or she has jurisdiction over the case. Now you're getting divorced in fucking California where they have uh, alimony for life where you got to pay this woman, uh, you know, until the day you die or she dies, right? So, again, I don't want to get too muddy into the legal system because it's a muddy fucking ocean of bullshit, right? Uh my background, I used to be in law enforcement. I've been around the court systems. I've been through child custody disputes, spent tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, I guess I should qualify that. That's my expertise, right? I'm not a lawyer, but I've been through this shit. And I've, I've seen, uh, I've spent many hours in courtrooms. So anyhow, that's going to be a, a big thing, right? So if, if you're in America, all right, state to state, each state law varies, but you're still in the United States of America, right? As messy as that is, imagine how messy it's going to get if you and your spouse move outside of the United States. Now, I'm, I'm talking the U.S., but you could be from England or Sweden or wherever. You leave your home country and you move to another country. Okay, so let's let's say let's do this. Let's say just for simplicity, you're from America, your wife is Filipino and you have children in America and you've been living in America. They lived in America for five years. You go to get a divorce. Well, the jurisdiction is going to be in that state, in that county in which you live. Okay, it's quite clear. Even though she may be a Filipino citizen as well, the children may be dual citizens. They live in America. It's pretty, it's quite clear. Um, okay, now say she ups and takes the kids on the next flight out and runs to the Philippines. The jurisdiction is still there in the county in which you live. 
and you need to file immediately, right? And then you get into this Hague Convention bullshit and it, it, it gets messy, right? It gets real fucking messy. But that's not the purpose of this talk. The, the purpose of it is, what if you and your spouse both agree, you're in love, you've been in love forever, you know, you got two, three, four kids, whatever, you're tired of the U.S. system and you move to the Philippines. You're not on vacation. You're going to make a move here. You're going to enroll your children in school. Maybe you build a house in her village. You buy a condo. You get a retirement visa. All of a sudden, after about six months, where do you think the jurisdiction over a custody, a custody dispute will lie? It's not, going to be, it's not going to be back there in the backwoods of Alabama because you have established residency and especially when the children are dual citizens, so you have a, a Filipino wife, kids who are also Filipino citizens, they're living in your wife's village and six months later, you know, y'all start butting heads and having a dispute the marriage starts crumbling or it's on the rocks. What about the children? What happens then? You're not going back to Alabama and filing a custody suit because you don't live there anymore. See how this works? Now all of a sudden, where is the jurisdiction? It's in the Philippines. Now again, I'm not the expert on this, but let's just apply basic logic. You go back to Alabama and file this, all her attorney has to say is, Your Honor, they voluntarily moved to the Philippines. They've been living there for six months. The kids are enrolled in school. They're dual citizens. Um, nobody lives here in Alabama anymore. And they would object to the, the jurisdiction being in Alabama. That's where it gets muddy because, well, it doesn't get muddy. The jurisdiction is going to be here. And if you and your wife get sideways, uh, it's going to be a hard road for you. Because A, the jurisdiction is here. And B, it's hard to beat a woman in court anywhere on the globe. And number three, it's damn near impossible for you, the foreign guy, to beat a local lady in her home country especially in Southeast Asia. Where does that leave you? Now look, I'm not saying that parental rights in, in America is any better or any worse. It's fucking horrible there. You know, in America, you get sideways with your wife. They kick you out of your fucking house. You turn into the weekend dad in two weeks every, every summer. And then you wonder why these badass kids over there are so fucked up and destroying the country. It's because they remove fathers from the family. It's pretty simple. But you're going to have even less rights once you leave your home country. Hard, almost damn near impossible to beat a woman in court, especially when it comes to kids. Number two, even more impossible uh, to beat a local in court in their home country. That applies to anything. So, it's just things that you need to think about and you need to talk over with a lawyer. Talk it over with your wife and say, hey, what happens if we move to the Philippines and me and you get a divorce? Uh, you know, we can't get along. It happens. Not everybody comes over here, moves to their wife's home country, and lives happily ever after. You know, sometimes. Things don't work out. Where does that leave the children? And where does that leave you as a father? And, and most of the time, and I know I got more ladies watching my show, but ladies, you have plenty of organizations that help you and represent you, and it's hard as hell to beat you in court to begin with. So I'm not representing you. I'm representing my fellow man because we are the underdog when it comes to trying to be a part of our children's lives once it gets intertwined into these fucked up court systems. So it's something that you 
the man need to talk about, discuss with a local attorney, discuss with your wife. Okay, I'm agreeing to move to your country, wherever that may be. Again, I'm here in the Philippines. I'm using that as an example. But what happens to the kids if we get a divorce? And it may be something I would want some type of agreement. If I'm living in America with my wife from country X and we have children and she wants to move back to her home country, this guy would have some type of custody agreement ahead of time that favors this guy, both in America and her home country. And you might think this is, uh, this is unfair or uh, mean or I don't know what the word would be. But before I moved, I would make sure I had full custody of those children. She would have to sign full custody over to me before I left America in both an American document and a document in whatever country she's from. That way, hey, I'll, I'll take a risk. I'll move there with you. We'll go live in your, your village, your home country. But if we get sideways, me and my children are leaving because I'll have full custody. And again, not just a U.S. document. If you only have a U.S. document, it depends on whether or not this country is a member of the Hague Convention, right? And even if they are, you're going to go through a court system if, uh, if she tries to file a case. Uh, well, I'll tell you what happens if they file a case. If, if your wife files a custody case or you file a custody case, a lot of these countries will put an immigration hole. The children can't leave until the case is settled. So they might be staying with you here. You may have custody here, but you can't leave the country until that case is settled because they'll put an immigration hold on your children. All these things are things that you need to go through your head and say, you know what, I need to address these things now so I don't end up like that poor bastard on 60 Minutes Australia that can't never see his kids again in Japan and, you know, could potentially or will go to jail if he tries to go see his own damn kids. And there was no court involved. She just took them and ran. Now look, the laws in every country are different. They're totally different from country to country. Um, my goodness, if you have children with a Japanese lady, don't ever take them children to Japan. That would be my advice, never. Because you don't know what's in the back of her head because all she's gotta do is get the kids to Japan, take them and run off, and get the fuck out of here, foreign guy. Hit the fucking bricks. Oh, by the way, you come try to see me, they'll put you in jail in Japan. It's insanity, right? I'm not saying U.S. laws are much better, but that, that, that case is crazy in Japan. Now, I don't know if I got it in there, but I think there's over 500 United States citizen children that are in the same boat, that their Japanese mother kidnapped them, and then that's it. Get the fuck out of here, Kano. Go home. You ain't got to go home, but you can't come see your kids. You got to get the hell up out of here. Um, I feel for that gentleman. Oh my God, I feel for that gentleman. Because he basically has little to no recourse. It's not like you go file a case and you got... Uh, he, he's in a bad situation. He's in a very bad situation. And hundreds, thousands of other parents are in the same situation dealing with children in Japan. Um, so again, this is, this is something you, you need to consider. Nobody gets married. Well, when we get married, we don't think about divorce, right? You're not in that mindset. You're, you're going to live happily ever after. And the reality is, especially for us Americans, it don't happen too often. Uh, at least not this guy, right? So I just saw that video, I saw that episode, uh, I, whenever it came out, a couple months ago. I was like, damn, that's, that's brutal. That's just downright archaic. It's insane. It's not fair. It's mean. But you know what? The world ain't, the world's not a fair place. 
and hindsight's always twenty twenty. but that dude should have never let his kids live in Japan. Live in any other fucking country. Let's go back to that. Okay. If I were in America and, okay, I used to be married to a Thai lady. So I'm in America, have a Thai wife. Now, if, if we would have had some kids, it would have been the same thing. Okay, we, we moved to Thailand, all my rights go away. I'm not gonna beat her in a Thai courtroom. She's gonna get them kids, and, them, and if she doesn't want them to leave Thailand, they're not gonna leave Thailand. But what happens if you wanna leave America, but you wanna be on an even playing field? Say you have a Filipino wife, you don't move to the Philippines, you move to Thailand. Now you're both foreigners. They don't give a shit. Nobody's favoring one, her or you. They're not favoring anybody because you're not a local. They just assume you get the hell out and fight back in America. They don't give a shit, right? Now you're on, on a better playing field. If you're married to a girl from Guatemala, don't move to Guatemala. You move to Mexico. And now it's a little bit more. You're, you're both non-citizens, right? You're not uh, going against a local girl in her home country, her home village, where her uncle is a goddamn judge, and you're going to lose. Uh, so, anyhow, if, if you find yourself in this situation, it's worth you sitting down for half a day and researching this and figuring out and asking the question, what is going to happen to the children if we move to your village, wherever that village is, and we can't get along? and get a divorce. What's gonna happen to the kids? Where are they gonna live? Who they, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it's important to me. It would be very important to me. It is important to me. And I'm one of those who have been through this shit. My particular details of my situation I'm going to detail in a book later on I've already talked about that it's just too much just too much to sit here and talk about it has to go in a book that's how oh my goodness but do do some due diligence do some research I talk about these uh, these situations that dudes get themselves in coming over here you know building houses in their wife's village on land that they don't even know who owns the dirt, you know, and then the family member who owns the dirt goes and buy or borrows money against your house, and you know, there's so so many just crazy stories, right? Well, people losing their money when they leave the West and they just don't think and so trusting of their local wife and their family, and they lose tens of thousands of dollars. That happens all the time. But I guess the thing that's not talked about enough or brought you know, to invoke thought and discussion is the custody of the children. And I just see so many people now are just in such a hurry to get the hell out of America because it's so bad. You don't want your children being you know, brought up by goddamn drag queens and all that shit. Hey, I got it. I got it. Um, but realize that if you, you move to your wife's home country and get sideways, you basically got no fucking rights. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. You got no fucking rights. Like here in the Philippines, if, if it's an illegitimate child, in other words, you're not on the, on the child's birth certificate, you have zero rights to that child until they're eight years old. If the mother doesn't want you to see that child, you have zero fucking rights to see that child until the child turns eight. Then there's a different set of laws that apply. And that's some leftover archaic shit from when the Spanish were, were here. Uh, not as archaic as this Japanese thing because it's permanent, right? But maybe it is. I mean, because for the first date, you got no rights. You can't see them. <laughs> you know, what, you know I, I don't know scatterbrained here there's no script I just think about what's in my mind and I, I start talking and looking looking at y'all right there through this lens but uh, that episode just kind of reminded me that I wanted to do this talk 
go see a lawyer. If you're thinking about moving over here, go see a lawyer, talk to a lawyer, make some type of agreement with your old lady. But again, unless you make the agreement both in the United States and here in the Philippines, uh, it's useless. You need both because the Philippines ain't gonna immediately enforce a U.S. order and the U.S. is not going to recognize a Filipino. I mean, the legal system is fucked up, right? We all know this. It's slow. It takes a lot of money, and it's so unclear. But that's what I would do. That's what I would do. I'm in America. I'm married. I got, you know, a couple ch children, Phil Am children, that are American citizens and Filipino citizens. We're gonna leave America and move to the Philippines. You're gonna sign over full custody of me to me in the US and both the Philippines and then I'll move with all kind of agreements and stipulations that say if we get divorced or, or we can't get along in the Philippines, me and the children are, well, we're going wherever I wanna go. It's just the way it is. It's the way it's got to be. And maybe somewhere in between your rights and her rights is, is where the agreement should settle. Does that make sense? Folks, I'm not going to drag this out. Uh, I think I made my points. I'm not even going to quote any of these laws, but you need to look at the Hague Convention. Oh, one more thing. So apparently last year, uh, about a year ago, the Philippines ratified or signed into something, some type of child support enforcement law through the Hague or what have you. I guess before they signed that, you know, there wasn't cl a clear way for the Philippines to try to enforce child support orders from other countries. I read an article that said they signed into that about a year ago. And I don't know anybody over here that's that's being forced to pay child support by the Philippine government from another country. I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know about that. But I did read that and I said, I just thought about, I said, you know what, what would be so fucking horrible is that, you know, say you moved over here and lost your kids to your Philippine and now you got to pay her child support uh, here in the Philippines. Never get to see her kids or I, I, oh, wow, that, that would be absolutely horrible, right? You think you're moving to paradise, next thing you know, you get divorced and you're paying child support over here. You gotta go back to America to work to be able to pay the child support, that's the point, right? Not gonna sit here and make enough money to pay uh, American-sized child support. Anyhow, research all that stuff if you find yourself in this position. And again, Outgoing disclaimer, I'm not a fucking lawyer and not giving legal, legal advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I told you what I would do. All I'm doing is telling you my story. And again, do I look like a fucking lawyer sitting here wearing this wife beater, drinking beer? No, I'm not a lawyer. So anybody wants to sue me, good fucking luck. Because ain't no damn jury going to look at me and say, oh yeah, he, he looks like a lawyer. He was purporting himself to be a lawyer. That's just some drunk redneck running his fucking mouth in front of a YouTube video. So if you got any experience, leave it down below uh, for others to learn from, for others to learn. You know, most people learn more in the comments than they learn from listening to me. All I do is set the stage, set the forum, give you the comment section to tell your story and for other people to learn. That's it, folks. Appreciate y'all watching my show. I certainly do. Again, I'm, a, I'm on a short clock. I'm about to go on a, uh, some adventures, some travel that I've got to handle. I'm gonna take y'all with me. I'm telling you up front, I'm traveling. You know, a lot of times I like, I like just uh, surprising you. Some people hate that shit. Some people think it's funny. Um, 
and again, I don't, I don't explain myself to nobody, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you up front, I'm, I'm, I'm about to travel. I'm gonna be on the road for a while. This camera will be with me every day. I hope y'all stay with me. I know you like watching the village stuff. I know you like watching Philippine stuff. And you know, I go to Thailand or hell, I went to the US the last trip, fucking views goes down. I got it, I got it, right? But uh, I certainly appreciate it if y'all stay with me and keep watching my show. Cause uh, you know, I still gotta pay the bills and send rice down to the village. So y'all stay with me. I certainly appreciate it. And I'll try to make my upcoming travels as exciting and as adventurous until I get back to my crew down in the village. And I miss them a lot. I miss them too much already. Um, don't want to leave them. Just like you, you know, like any parent. I don't want to leave them. But sometimes you got to go handle business and uh, that's what I got to do. I... Uh, there, there's a saying, I won't even tell you where it's from, it's just a saying that I used to get told if there's something to be done, you just gotta ride the goat. You gotta ride that goat. I mean, don't matter what it is, no, no matter how shitty the job is, you go ahead and ride that goat. So I got some business to handle and basically it's, it's I gotta ride the goat, that's it, no choice. I gotta go ride a goat, ride that goat. Handle business, TCB. I'm out of here.